Okay, and finally, the last talk of the session, which is also the last talk of the day, is entitled FACE, Fast AES Counter Mode Encryption Techniques Based on the Reuse of Repetitive Data. It's a paper by Jin Young Park and Dong Hun Lee. Jin Young is giving the talk. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the introduction. Now I will start my presentation. Uh, the topic of my presentation is uh, performance improvement of AS counter mode in software. As you know, the block cipher AS and counter mode are used for numerous applications as an encryption technique uh, because of its various advantages such as problem security, no randomness requirement, and parallel processing, and so on. The AS, the AS counter mode is not only operated, operated on its own, but it's also incorporated within authenticated encryption schemes such as ASGCM, ASCCM. So optimizing AS counter mode has numerous benefits beyond the effect on itself. There are special characteristics on AS algorithm which is used in counter mode. Uh, the counter mode encrypts sequentially increased counter rather than plain text sequences. Then the output is operated on using plain text sequences and XOR operation. So as shown in the figure that presents the initial whitening phase of AS, uh, while processing multiple blocks, the counter increases but changes, in, changes only the last byte in most cases. So, as, as a result, we can find that the output of initial whitening also differ in the last one byte. Others are identical. To sum up then, uh, there are only small changes in each of input block. So this means that the front located rounds operate on many overlap the input in AS counter mode. So if these overlap values are cached and reused properly, the AS counter mode can guarantee the enhanced performance. This kind of technique was already known as counter mode caching. However, previous counter mode caching uh, only reused the straightforward non-changing bytes. So they have to recalculate the rest, which is not covered by caching, caching technique in every block. Uh, I'll dis I will discuss this limitation in more detail after a while. Um, I'm sure that you already know well about each transformation of AS round function, so I'll pass this page. And now I will remind you about some of the AS implementation methods. First, there is a table-based implementation. This method re re uses the pre-computation table and the round function is done by several table lookups and XOR operation. This method was very useful because the, uh, very useful for efficiently implementing AS in counter mode. However, this method is vulnerable to counter mode count cache time inside the channels because the lookup indices are depending on the round key that is a secret information. So, to overcome cache timing vulnerabilities on software implementation, this last method has been introduced. This last implementation is a constant time implementation. There is no secret dependent, uh, there is no variable time instructions on, on conditional branches or memory access patterns that depends on secret information. And finally, Intel has announced a set of instructions called ASNI that support, that provides dedicated hardware support for AS acceleration and to circumvent cache leaks. By using the AS instruction set, a program can do a full round in a single instruction. This table shows the fastest result of each implementation method. A simple numerical comparison is not appropriate because the test environments are all different. However, through this result, we can briefly rank each method by its performance. In order to record on the improved performance, someone might try to leverage into existing counter mode caching technique. However, such an attempt cannot succeed easily. Previous counter mode caching 
is not effective on bit sliced and SDNI based implementation. It only covered partial data of round transformation, so the rest, which is not covered by caching technique, should be calculated in every block. For example, in the case of ASNI, a round operation can be done using only one ASNI instruction. So adding some operations to calculate the rest becomes a considerable burden, not a benefit. Therefore, the previous count mode caching only, applied, only has been applied to table-based implementation to show its efficiency. So now we propose an implementation technique for race counter mode in software. Our method extends the existing counter mode caching and we name the phase. Unlike the previous counter mode caching technique that deals with partial result of round operation, our method phase can cover a round operation entirely. And we show that our extended counter mode caching technique can be applied to, to bit slice implementation and even implementation using ASNI instruction. Our work is the first to apply counter mode caching to bit slice and even ASNI based implementation. And consequently, we record, recorded the highest throughput ever achieved. Our result shows that they are approximately 15 to 20 percent more faster than those that were previously reported. Okay, now I will explain our proposed method, proposed technique, including previous ones. I think these are probably the end result of uh, count mode caching. There are five types of caching technique, and they are distinguished depending on the round that applied. The figure, that, uh, figure at the bottom of this slide shows the, how the difference in the counter is spread by round operation. As I mentioned before, the difference in the counter between two successive blocks is just less one byte. And at the end of round two, this difference is spread to full result. Now let's take a closer look at how to make the repetitive data useful. First, phase RD0 targets the initial whitening. Uh, in this phase, while processing multiple blocks, the value of counter increases, but changes only the last byte in most cases. Most bytes do not change on most byte changes until the last byte of counter uh, causes a uh, carry. As you can see, after the initial whitening, this characteristic is still maintained in the result. The output is different in the last one byte. So, unchanged bytes can be cached and reused to accelerate the operation. Base reuses uh, only 12 bytes out of unchanged 15 bytes to minimize the cache updating. So, <clears throat> base can use the same cached information until the 11th element of counter changes because the initial whitening phase is just an extra operation of imp counter and round key. So, while processing 2 to the power of 32 minus 1 successive blocks, Face does not need to update the cached information. And face RD1 and RD1 plus target the uh, round one. Uh, since the output of round zero, it means uh, initial heightening, uh, is used as the input of round one. So the, so the last byte of Inputs differ in the last one byte. And this difference affects only the first column instead of affecting the whole state. So we can state, cache, and reuse the result of round one except for the first column. Since the cache data is changed when the 14th element of round one input is changed, so phase updates the cache data once for every 256 blocks. The previous Hongjun's implementation is, are also caches partial data of the first column of round one result. However, phase does not need to cache it. 
all the first column data can be covered by face RD1 plus. Well, the face RD1 plus generates uh, pre computation values for the first column. Uh, these pre computation values can be generated during um, initialization phase or during in encryption phase. Uh, most of the first, or most of the result state of round one are covered by face RD1. However, the first column is changed for every block. So, as you can see, the factors that determine the first column are zeros, fifth, tenth, and fifteenth element of round one input. Since the round key remains the same while working, so 15th element of round one input determined by the last byte of a counter. And according to the increasing rule that adds one to the previous count value, this last byte of a counter is increased linearly. So those three bytes are never changed while processing two to the power of 40 blocks. Uh, so uh, this means that uh, the same values are duplicated per every 256 blocks. Uh, for example, the zeros block and 256th block has the same value, and similarly, first block and the 257th block has the same value. So we can generate a temporary lookup table that uses the last byte of counter as an index. We need an additional one kilobyte to create the create a lookup table because the first column is a four byte and the last byte of counter changes from zero to 255. These pre-computation tables can be used for processing two to the power of 40 successive blocks without the need for on any additional updating process. This is the caching procedure for face RD1+. Plus. At the end of round one, the first column, oh, sorry, at the end of round one, the first column is stored in the temporary lookup table, and at this time, the last byte of counter is used as an index. So finally, in encryption phase, by leveraging phase RD1 and phase RD1 plus, full operations up to round one can be done with two memory load and one merge operation. Phase RD2 and phase RD2 plus target the round two. Uh, in round two, the result state of round one is also used as the input of round two. So, in this case, the difference in the number of bytes is four, which composes the first column. And this difference at, at the end of the round two, the difference in input affects the full result. So, the outputs of two successive blocks are completely different. However, we can also make, re make an caches in round two. The box on the right side of the figure describes the calculation from mixed columns to the end of round two, especially for the first column. As you can see, uh, since zero's element is different, so the data related to zero's element would change, but the others do not. Therefore, we can cache the intermediate calculation result for the first column, as shown in the figure by the red boxes here. And similarly, the other columns also cache the intermediate calculation result. For example, the second column can cache it except for the data related to this third, third element. 
Face can read this cache data while processing 255 successive blocks. And the frequency of update is equal to that of face RD1 because the alteration of the second column of round two affects the cached information. Face RD2 plus also, target, also generates the pre-computation tables for the remaining intermediate data, which is not covered by phase RD2. However, phase RD2 plus leverages the similar properties of phase RD1 plus, while the target is uh, different. So I would like to ask your understanding for skipping the details of phase RD2 plus. However, in eventually, by leveraging phase RD2 and phase RD2 plus, the full operations up to round two can be done by two memory load and one XL operations only. At this point of time, there may be concern about uh, cache timing vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, because uh, since our method uses lookup, additional lookup table, uh, it seems that our method reintroduces timing side channels into um, protected implementation. However, in conclusion, uh, our the, the cache timing side channels cannot apply to our, our purpose method. This is because the, there is no secret dependent access patterns instructions and or content branches in our purpose method. And we, to evaluate our purpose implementation, we implemented the phase by modifying the AS source code which contained in the open source libraries. To the best of, best of our knowledge, our targets are the fastest ones. And we tested our implementations in several, several environments as shown in the table. A comprehensive comparison research is summarized in, the, in this table. We measured the throughput using three key lengths while changing the input of the input blocks. In case of the input size of 4 kilobyte and 128 key bit, uh, our pizza slice phase records 6.41 cycles per byte, where the previous fastest one records 7.59 cycles per byte. And in case of ASNI, phase records 0.44 cycles per byte, uh, where the previous one records 0.54 cycles per byte. So we showed here an observation on the structure of counter mode so for AES that can be leveraged for gaining a noticeable performance boost in software implementation. Our method phase can improve the performance of AES counter mode approximately 15 to 20%. And phase can be employed regardless of implementation method. And lastly, it would be interesting to verify whether such caching techniques can be applied to other algorithms that have a similar characteristics to the AS counter mode. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Anybody? Then I think we are just on time to conclude the session. Thanks again, and I give the floor to Peter again. I guess.